بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على قتلتهم وأعدائهم أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ali Al-Habib, coming live to you from the minor land of Fedak. Welcome to the Ali Al-Habib show. For mostly, we approach the domain of sanctity. To our awaited Imam, blessings be upon him, we convey our most heartfelt congratulations and benedictions upon the birthday commemoration of the Lady of Heaven, Fatima al Zahra. Blessings be upon her. The proof of Allah upon His creation. And upon the commemoration of her enemy and her oppressor, the tyrant, the very killer of the Lady of Heaven. Abu Bakr, son of Abi Quhafa, we convey our congratulations to our awaited Imam, blessings be upon him, on the commemoration or anniversary of his death. It is as if when Fatima alayhi salam, alayhi salam, when Fatima alayhi salam's name or her birthday emerges, Abu Bakr dies. It is as if when Fatima relives, Abu Bakr dies and soon, insha'Allah, the crimes of this tyrant, whom sadly millions around the world sanctify him and revere him greatly. We hope that insha'Allah with the coming of this film, his true crimes shall emerge and shall be known to the Muslims, thereby dropping him from the status of sanctity and reveration to the status of a criminal tyrant who deviated and caused a deviation like no other, thereby bringing them to the hands of Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam the progeny of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alih, and going with their continents illuminated to the, to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alih, on the Day of Judgment saying, O Messenger, we held on to your wish, we held on to your command, we held, we held on to the rope of Allah we held on to the book of Allah and your purified progeny and we have disassociated from their enemies. Ladies and gentlemen, the birthday of Lady Fatima, the birthday of the Lady of Heaven transpires upon us with great victories. As I am speaking to you now, the world is speaking about the Lady of Heaven. I ask the director to show the audience that I, as I am speaking to you now, the world is speaking about the Lady of Heaven. The world is speaking about the spark that's laid, that the Lady of Heaven has ignited in the world. The news outlets all these global news outlets are currently saying the Lady of Heaven, Fatima, salawatullahi alayha. As you can see, ladies and gentlemen, the world is currently saying in the big lines, the Lady of Heaven movie, the Lady of Heaven movie trailer sparks support from around the world. The Enlightened Film Production Company recently released 
the first trailer for their historical drama, The Lady of Heaven, on Film Select's YouTube trailer platform. Almost instantly, the trailer picked up massive organic support. Ladies and gentlemen, let me, pond let me stop here with you. And I'd like to read the articles, or uh, this article at least, with you, ladies and gentlemen. If you realize what they wrote, they wrote almost instantly, the trailer picked up massive organic support. Massive organic support. The trailer that was released around a month ago was pure, the support that it gained was massively organic. What do I mean by this? That no announcement was before the, the, the release of the trailer. No announcement. The trailer was released immediately without any form of announcement or without any form of zakhm, uh, as we say, any form of anticipation in the English world or in the, or in the Western world. And usually, when films release their trailers, you often see them being advertised on your videos or on the videos that you watch on YouTube. You would click on any, on any video of any uh, uh, category and you would see a film trailer for the first at least couple seconds before the video come up as an advertisement. Our movie was not adver advertised. Our movie's views, almost 2 million now, sorry, over 2 million now, over 2 million now, was purely organic support. And just to mention here something that the company of the film, the companies that have contracted with the Lighted Kingdom production, were absolutely uh, amazed to see such organic support in such a quick time, without any form of announcement, without any form of advertisement, without any form of push on the release of the trailer. They were absolutely amazed to see that for such a company, that is, and it is the first company, it is the first production for such a company. It's a brand new company, the Enlightened Kingdom Productions, on their first film, on their first production, on the first, you know, the director's first movie, or at least one of the director's first movie, for to have such a shake for the world, to have such an impact where we have over 200 trailer reactions now. Over 200 trailer reactions, the spark that was emerged on December last month on the, on the release of the trailer has shocked the world and shocked the, 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 the companies that we have contracted with. We continue. Almost instantly, the trailer picked up massive organic support with its views reaching nearly 2 million in under a month. The trailer has since been reposted thousands of times and the comment section was garnering close to 100,000 before being turned off. Over 160 reaction videos. Now, what's the date today? The date is the 7th of February. On the 7th of February, confidently, the trailer reaction has surpassed this number and we have hit the 200 mark, I believe, or close to the 200 mark. We've reached over 200 trailer reactions. Trailer reactions to the video, the trailer have been made by enthusiastic fans, honestly speaking, these reaction videos from all around the globe. To see this, to, th to see this, ladies and gentlemen, is a, is a blessing. It's something remarkable, Wallah. 
I don't know if it, if it has hit you just yet that the Chinese, the Japanese, the people from Denmark, from France, from Belgium, from Germany, from Japan, from America, from North America, from South America, from Mexico, from uh, Spain, from Portugal, all these people, what are they saying? They are saying, the Lady of Heaven, Fatima, alayhi salam. Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The lady whom no one knew anything about, including Muslims. Including Muslims, including Shia Muslims. We have made the world say the name of Fatima, alayhi salam. We have made the world know who was the daughter of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Has it hit you? Did you ever think that such a day could come where all these people from various religions, from various nationalities say the lady of heaven, Fatima alayhi salam. Fatima. From around the world, over 160 reaction videos to the trailer have been made by enthusiastic fans from around the world, with more pouring in every day. The trailer views and fan base for the film grow exponentially, globally, every day. From the Middle East to North America and Europe. The films or the film trailer's sensational reaction is a credit to both the filmmaking quality and the subject matter of the film, or, or the film's subject matter, with touches on a storyline, on a storyline never tackled by filmmakers. Indeed, this storyline. Indeed, this storyline is a masterpiece, I would call it. Never seen before. A film that is unique in so many ways. It is unmatched, believe me, ladies and gentlemen. It is unmatched by any film in its genre. Unmatched. It cannot be matched. The storyline, the quality, the meaning, the very meaning of the film, all the, the message that, is, that it is conveying. The films that are right now, they are not even close to the category of the Lady of Heaven. Not even close. With the storyline, with the message that, it does, that is it is conveying and that is the most important of course the production quality the preciseness in historical accuracy matching the the present with the past all of these elements but the most important thing is the message that it is that it is conveying this message to the world removing any form of misconception with regards to the religion of Al-Islam. Changing the world's views for the first time on a global, worldwide base on, upon their view site or upon their views, opinions to the religion of Al-Islam. A brand new, brightening beam has emerged with the coming of this film. Removing any form of the dark past and the dark misconceptions that there is regarding Al-Islam. If people know, for example, that Abu Bakr, for example, is actually a tyrant, is actually an oppressor, is actually a deviator, a hypocrite, a power-hungry individual, would they, the Muslims first, would they go on his footsteps on burning individuals? On burning people alive? Would they go on, would they go on, on his footsteps? 
They will not. And when the Western man or the non-Muslim, when they hear that this man, Abu Bakr, is actually a hypocrite, is actually a, a person who, devi who, who, who caused a deviation, who his, his, his sole goal was to seek power, power hungry, went to the extent of attacking the daughter of the messenger. And they say that this man, from him and from his actions, came to us, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Jabhat al-Nusra, and the other terrorists' organization. They will say, this, is, this man is the problem, not Prophet Muhammad Not the messenger. Forever, after the release of this film, forever, the name terrorist will only be targeted at Abu Bakr and his followers. Abu Bakr was the first. Abu Bakr, son of Abi Quhafa, and the last one who came, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. The line is one, the name is one, the methodology is one. It is a terrorist methodology that Islam has nothing got to do with it. If you want to know Islam, you go to the progeny of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you come to the Shias, we, t we tell you what is Islam. You want to find light and you want to find this nur, this beam of clarity and confidence and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and belief. You go to the Ahlul Bayt al Isma. You go to the progeny of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Ali, Fatima, Hassan and Hussein. We have a caller. Let's take it inshallah and we'll continue. We have Brother Sulaiman from USA. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, dear brother. And yourself? I'm doing good, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Welcome to the show, so, dear brother. I wanted to uh, comment specifically about the effect that I see the trailer having on some non Muslims. Uh, yeah. The area I live is predominantly. Christian and I showed some of the Christians I know this trailer and even they people who have no idea about who the Sunni who the Shia are I can see even them are, they are having interest in this film they are seeing the high production quality the trailer the story and they are all interested in it it seems yeah that is a phenomenal a phenomenal uh, thing to see and it is an absolute honor to have witnessed this witness, witness this in our time where the non-Muslim is saying the Lady of Heaven's name and is saying the Lady of Heaven Fatima alayhi salam and of course the production quality no one could speak bad about the production quality in the end of the day not even our enemies not even those who are trying to you know uh, attack the film or etc I've even seen some of the people attacking the film. Uh, they're saying, you know, even though my uh, mother just said it's haram to watch it, and even though I think the message is bad, I'm still going to watch it. I've even seen the enemies of, of the film are. saying this. <laughs> of course they are. <laughs> At the end of the day, Brother Sulaiman, every Muslim is going to watch this film. Whether they say that they're not going to, whether they, you know, portray that they are the most aggressive people against the story of this film, etc., they, they are going to watch it in the end of the day. I don't believe any Muslim would would hear of such a film and not watch it and be as able to watch it he's not going to watch it definitely they are the the, the 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 first people who are against this film the very first people who you see online from you know certain groups or certain ittijahat certain motives they are the first who will be watching the film the first people the very first people <laughs> yeah it seems to be that way <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, I've noticed even the people who attack um, Sheikh Yasser the most, attack the Rafa the Foundation the most. I've noticed that even some of them are the ones promoting, oh, watch Yas uh, Sheikh Yasser's video on this, or watch this Rafa the video on this. I've noticed this especially uh, online and in Twitter and other apps. Yeah, it's, that's correct. You know, they're actually serving in, this, in the dissemination of this film whilst they don't know. These people, they, they, they're really like intellects, you know, they, um, <laughs> they are actually serving 
the, the, the dissemination, the wide spread of this film with their attack. So I say continue, please. You are benefiting us. <laughs> yes, especially when the people seeing their attacks realize their attacks have no basis at all. <laughs> exactly. Of course they have no basis. What do you expect? <laughs> they, what, is, what is their issue here? What is their issue? It's Sheikh Yasser al-Habib. That's their issue. And we'll comment on that later, inshallah. Yeah, go ahead. Inshallah. Yeah, I've noticed that none of them are attacking the actual message of the film. They're attacking small little details, such as, oh, you show the face of uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and you see the people behind it, that they're causing this unity. <laughs> that's the only, that's the only uh, criticisms I've actually seen of the film. Firstly, the portrayal of the holy figures no one no one took their role as in there is no actor just to make it clear because many people seem to not understand what uh, is on the public website on the lady of heaven no actor there is no actor with that face are you with me understand yeah. me please no i'm not speaking to you i'm speaking to the to, the, to those who doesn't understand um no actor has that uh, you know, malamih or continents. No one has the continents of what uh, of the character of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa the character of Amir al muminin the characters of the infallibles, the holy figures. No one has this type of face. This face is made through a unique synthesis of actors, camera effects, lighting, and visual effects. Ladies and gentlemen, you know it's a good chance to speak of this. It's a story that maybe none has heard. You know, in, in, in the beginning phase, when we, finished when we finished recording and we had finished a part of the, you know, editing and, and montage and uh, what re revolves around it, we had uh, invited a, a company from California. This was mentioned by Sheikh Al-Habib. We had invited uh, a company from California to discuss with them the distribution of the film. It is a very big company, it is a known company in California. And there were two guys in the beginning and we were, the meeting was with, the, of course, the Alighted uh, Production Company, the brothers working uh, uh, on the task and, or on the project. And the meeting was, was via Zoom or, uh, you know, yeah, Zoom, it was via Zoom. So two guys entered and they sat down and started, started the, you know, the, the meeting. And they sat down firstly very cold, very, you know, they, what do they think? They think that this is just like some type of religious film that has just come up, you know, one of these uh, boring uh, historical films that, you know, they are very, you know, uh, you know very boring, very not uh, interacting, not, thr not, not of thriller. So they were like sitting down confident and, you know, okay, what do you have for us? You know, just give, give us what you have, you know, something along these lines. <laughs> so what we done at the time was show them parts of the film. Trailer, teaser, something along these lines. And as they were watching, they were about to jump from their seats. They were about to jump from their seats. They were absolutely shocked to see this film, to see the production quality, the storyline, the message it is conveying, the, uh, you know, the, the preciseness in every detail. They were absolutely shocked and the man was like, wow, what have you done? This is, this is, this is an absolutely beautiful film. It is a, 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 a I did not expect this. And we, when we had showed him the, you know, the figure of Prophet Muhammad وآله, in the film, at, at begin, at, in the beginning he did not know what, what was it. He's like, oh, so this is the Prophet Muhammad. Yes, okay. That's, he did not realize that it was, uh, you know, through visual effects. He didn't realize that the, that the face, the continents was created through visual effects. He did not realize this. So this is this actually, you know, if, if an expert did not realize that this face, this continence, is created, then I should, I guess we can excuse the 
uh, you know, the Shia or, or our supporters who ask about this such question, who say, uh, how have you portrayed the, the infallibles? He did not first realize that it was a, uh, it was a created, this face was, you know, technically created until we had ex told him this and explained to him and we showed him, you know, the faces. You would be able to see, you'll be able to say, to see this as soon as we show you, for example, the behind the scenes of how the face was created, then you would, you would believe us, you know. This is this, I'm this be is, honest this with is, you, brother. Even this is the preciseness of how how we went. This is Sheikh Al Habib was speaking about. Sheikh Al Habib, his his methodology and the way he he does his work, he always seeks for the best, for the best, the very highest possible. To the extent that people were not able to differentiate whether this face that we see of Prophet Muhammad and of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali alayhi salam, for example, is it was actually created, was not actually, is not actually, is not an actual actor. So basically, what I'm trying to convey here, that no actor took the role of the holy figures. This face that you see is strictly based upon the narrations that we have in our corpus. Read Kitab al-Kafi. You will have a long narration narrated by Abu Hala. Abu Hala al-Ansari. And he, he was a wasafan. He used to describe, he used to describe, you know, he, he described to us the face of the Messenger of Allah. And they were absolutely shocked when, to, to the, the preciseness that we have. For example, uh, the beard of the Messenger of Allah. His beard. Abu Hala, in the, in the in narration of in, in Al-Kafi, described to us that he has 17, 17 white hairs in his bed. 17 white hairs. They were shocked, like, how did he know this? How did he know that he has 17 white beds or, or white hairs in his bed? We say that we are different. We have narrations to, who describe the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu You, on the other hand, for example, you know, Christians, they don't have the depiction or they don't know exactly how Jesus was. So they were absolutely, or looked like, they were absolutely shocked from this, from this area. So uh, rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, this film is made by Sheikh Al-Habib, a man who knows, uh, you know, he knows, knows what's right and what's wrong, inshallah. He knows what is uh, legitimate and what is not, knows what is uh, what the shara or, or what you know shara can uh, permiss and what is not permissible and by the way Sayyid Sistani and I believe uh, Sayyid of course Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi and also I believe Sayyid Rahani maybe as far as I can recall but definitely Sayyid Sistani and Sayyid Sadiq permiss uh, the for the holy figures to be created or to be portrayed, depicted through creative means, through such means. There's a fatwa of this. There is a verdict that we, that one can find online. It's easy. Go go ahead and search. Go to the website, and you can find it. That creating or depicting the holy figures, the holy personalities through creative means, as in not an actor, is permissible. And rather, it's and and Sayyid Sistani also permisses. That a person, if he is a righteous man, if a man is a righteous man, you know him, he's of khayr and he is, yani, he's a righteous man. He, is, he can also portray or, de, or, or take the role of the holy figure. However, in our case, we see, to hold on to the verdict of Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, where he says that creative means, that we can depict the holy infallibles, the holy figures, through creative means. And this is what we have, what we have done. And wait until you see, inshallah. Wait until you see. And then you would see how you can have a connection with the Messenger of Allah. Of course, we don't, you know, say or claim that this is the Messenger of Allah, the face of the Messenger of Allah. We cannot claim that. We cannot claim that at all. But rather, we have tried our best to stick and, and, and be very precise to the hair, to the hair, to the point, to the point, to the very... How can I, what, what, more, what, what more can I say? Very precise, very precise in how we created this uh, face which, was, which depicted the Messenger of Allah based upon the narrations 
100%. Yes, dear brother. I'm going to be honest with you, brother. Even after I read on the website that these faces were made from CGI and not actually actors, yeah. I was still shocked. And then I read $15 million budget. I mean, of course, <laughs> looking yeah. at the production quality and only $15 million, you look at some Hollywood movies, their budget was like $100 million, $150 million, and they don't even have the same production quality as this, as this film. It's, yeah, of course. Of course, alhamdulillah, this is the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you very much for your call, Brother Sulaiman. You're welcome. May Allah bless you. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is someone with me? Okay, inshallah. We, we should have another call coming, inshallah, in a few moments. We continue, inshallah. We... The film trade a sensational reaction is a credit to both the filmmaking quality. Truly, it is a credit. It, 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 advances, it advances the cinematic production in many ways. The way this film was uh, created, the, the way this film was uh, produced is a great or is a sensational reaction is a great credit, sorry, uh, is a credit to both the filmmaking company, the filmmaking quality, and the film's subject matter, which is the storyline that we spoke about, which touches on a storyline never tackled before by filmmakers. And this is the picture that they have put. Truly, this picture says everything, to be honest with you. This picture here. It is, it, it is a question, sorry? We have Sister Zahra from California. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome dear sister. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, I want to thank everyone who took part in the movie because I feel that it has, it, it has potential to make a great impact on those who have no idea who the Ahlul Bayt are. Whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. May Allah bless you, inshaAllah. Thank you. Would you like to say your initial reaction to when you first saw the trailer? Yeah, um, at first I had uh, no idea that the movie was coming out. I just, uh, someone sent it in a group chat. And... I, I, I was shocked. I, I had no idea. And then I went on YouTube and I watched the trailer and I instantly fell in love. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. How did you feel for the first time a story that has been rather buried, buried in the books and concealed by the hands of the uh, enemies with Sora? I say this. How did you feel for the first time to see the story of lady of the lady of heaven embark and enlighten the world what was your feeling i i feel i feel like i don't know what to say there's so many great emotions i mean th there are many people who try to make excuses to hate on the movie like if they want to say that the grand ayatollah has something against it even sistani himself is okay with it of course they um yeah, so they say it's gonna create fitna. It's gonna gonna make people want to kill Shias more. But she, I I've said this to many people. Shias have been killed from the time of Imam Ali, and now that we have a chance to spread the message of the Ahlul Bayt, we should take it and not fear. I sent some this sister. Well said. Well said. Thank you. They are not going to change the course that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has dictated, or has stipulated, or has divinely ordained. It is the it is in the end of the day if you you fear separation you fear fitna in the end of the day it is the it is the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa taala to that that there should be separation there should be uh, division the messenger of Allah we all agree Shias and Sunni so called Sunnis we agree that the messenger of Allah blessings be upon him and his progeny said. My Ummah shall be separated into 73 sects. All of them are in hell, but one. So this separation 
is 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 meant to be is is divinely ordained decreed what we we are unable we can we can coexist like we said we have no issues whatsoever whatsoever as a matter of fact all the time people who refer to themselves as sunnis come to the mosque pray with us eat with us we discuss and we take them home we drive them back to their to their premises we are not against unity we are we are unity as 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 a human being as a respected human being as as in we we can coexist unity in humanity this is what we are calling for but unity in religion we how can there be unity in religion one believes that one believes in a god one believes for example can is can we unite with a person who believes in two gods we believe in one god we are monothe monotheists can we unite with him what is the definition of unity here what is the definition here we cannot divide we cannot uh, uh, unite upon things or upon beliefs that co that is contrary to our beliefs they believe abu bakr is a righteous man we believe him to be a hypocrite how can we unite what can we do what we have to do is 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 agree to disagree we can speak to him nicely he comes to our mosque we eat with him he we call him to to tashayyuh he may not he may he may not accept no problem you don't need to accept him that we done our our we done our work we done our duty but they get to say they get to say that abu bakr is a righteous man and he is a righteous leader and he is the great man however we don't have the right to say that no he is actually according to us at least according, according to us he is an hypocrite how is that unity how is that coexisting how is that fair how is that right they are allowed to produce a 30 episode series on umar ibn al-khattab whilst we are not allowed to even not not produce a film or produce something we're not, we're not even allowed to express our critique to the film that's where did he get this history from this history is fabricated this history where this is based upon even weak narrations people don't know this people are unaware of this why is it that we aren't always the shias are always you know degraded and not even allowed to express himself not even allowed to express his beliefs do we not have the right they have the right to express express no problem say abu bakr is a righteous man you have the right to so today so to say so but we also should have the right to say that he was not and we uh, we bring our evidences not from our books from your books we should have a form of equality we should have a form of equality where one is able to respect to respect each other if they different if they if they, dif if they differ and this is our whole our scholars from before Sheikh Al Mufid was like this, but Minat Taq was the very companions of the, Hisham ibn al Hakam. His companion was a Kharaji, or his, his business partner was a Kharaji, was a person who used to curse Imam Ali. However, they managed to, to not even coexist, but they managed, they managed, they managed even to even make a partnership in business. And this is, this is inshallah a matter that we will discuss inshallah. We have a caller, let's take it inshallah. Ali Jafar from Canada. Assalamu alaikum. Mahdi Jafar. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. This is uh, Brother Fahmi. Brother Fahmi, Assalamu Alaikum, dear brother. Oh, alaikum Assalam. Uh, How are brother you doing? Ali. My, my apologies, doing dear well. brother. I have I have your no, question okay. that I do, did not uh, manage to answer oh, in, the okay. last, in the last episode. Inshallah, we'll answer it today. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, I, I did want to make a quick statement and then uh, maybe ask another question if you can answer it. Uh, it you know, it would be great, but um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll leave that up to your discretion. Sure. Um, so the question is, well, actually, the comment, the statement I want to make is that I was uh, surprised, and I was, uh, you know, just it really struck me after seeing uh, the many reactions that people made on YouTube, um, and you know, some of them really understood what this movie was about just from the trailer alone. Um, after seeing the scene, especially the scene of uh, Lady Fatima uh, being attacked, one lady commented in shock, uh, saying they want to burn her. 
Yeah. And and she said, you know, maybe this is another reason why this movie is controversial. They don't want her story to come out. Exactly. And another man says, we are going back to the very beginning of Islam and connecting it to problems within Islam today. You know, the parallels between terrorism today and where this terrorism originally started from. Yeah. And then many other people, when they saw the scenes of the lady being attacked, were shocked. And you can see that in, in, their, uh, in their reactions and facial expressions. Um, after seeing that that particular scene. So, you know, I think this is a, a good indication of what we can expect, the impact of, uh, of, of this movie and, and what we can expect from that standpoint. Of course. Um, and, in the, and the question I have um, uh, before I hang up is, um, I noticed the film is not rated. You know, you know when you see trailers, usually you, 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 you know, you have that green background with, uh, with the film rating telling you that it's rated you know, in a certain category. Yeah. So I was wondering if we have an indication of what the rating would be for this film. That's because and, uh, that's that's be, that's the, because the f the film has not been yet released, brother Fahmi. The ratings would be after the film's um, release. This is when you should, uh, be, no. you should see the rating, uh, unless if the rating's on the trailer. Or no, what I what I what I, what I mean is, um, you know, not 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 the ratings in terms of, in terms of you know how how they you know people liked the movie versus you know that, not that kind of rating. You mean the critiques, but right? But the rating and no 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 not not the critiques. Uh, the 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 rating of the movie in terms of the appropriateness for the audience. You know, so for example, oh. they'll say PG thirteen. So if you're thirteen okay. and over, you can see it. Or they'll say rated R if it's you know, you know, you know, violence or, you know what I mean? So I'm just wondering what that category, you know, what's the minimum age, I guess, oh, I what I'm asking is what is the minimum age that this movie can be shown to and what the, you know, rating agencies would approve it for? I would have uh, to refer so back. That's, I would have to refer back to for that question to the, the team that is working in the Enlightened, uh, Enlightened Kingdom uh, production company. I would not... Um, Inshallah. Inshallah. be able to answer the question uh, as of now but inshallah in the next episode okay. it will be answered inshallah inshallah well thank you very much for taking my call and uh, you know all all the best and inshallah we'll we'll hear more good news in the coming no weeks no problem no problem at all it is always a pleasure to take your call and take your comments dear brother fahmi may allah bless you inshallah um brother fahmi actually asked a question last in the last episode it's good to discuss it now he asked do the Imams have shadows? And did the shadows appear in the film? <clears throat> the Imams السلام, from their attributes or from um, their attributes is not to have shadows. No, the Imams السلام, do not have shadows. Their essence is nur. Their essence is light as it is uh, known, that their essence, they were created from light. Blessings be upon them and their progeny. Blessings be upon them. The question regarding, uh, do the shadows appear in the film? The shadows, um, of course this film, is from the imagination of the child, from the imagination of the boy named Laith. And if we were to try to attempt to... Naam asmaakum, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, we'll take this call, inshallah, and then we'll go back to responding. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Gabriella, welcome to the show. Yeah, it's very nice to speak with you again. Um, May Allah bless I have you, my sister. A, may Allah bless you too. Um, the question that I have is that many people are criticizing this film because it's, you know, a sectarian movie. It's, they say it's promoting fitna, they say it's Britishism, you know, all these things. But uh, something that, uh, you know, that, that man, Muzaffar Haider, commented is that it may be a motivation for the angry Wahhabis to 
practice violence against the Shias in the Islamic countries. I and I also was afraid if something bad happened to you, brothers, mm, may Allah protect you. But may I want to hear your opinion on on, on this. You, too. you know the this claim. Uh, honestly, what we can say about it is it 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 emerges from from people who lack knowledge and lack uh lack uh, intelligence to be honest with you yeah these are people who <coughs> were the the source of the problem throughout history why did uh lady fatima alayhi salam or why did the ansar for example did not support Lady Fatima in, in, in her revolution against Abu Bakr. It is for, for the very reason that they wanted, they feared fitna, they feared separation, they feared tensions. Yeah. That Sayyidah Zara salam, says in the Sermon of Fadak, whom everyone should read, she says, Ibtidaran za'amtum khawf al fitna, you straight away. Mm. When Fatima السلام, went to your door, Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, she took it upon herself to come with her husband and her two sons, Ali and Hassan, Hassan and Hussein, to come to your Hussain. door, to come to your door, and you reject her? You don't oh. come up for her? She comes to you, and you reject her? What did you fear? They say, we feared fitna. Zara alayhi salam responds, Ibtidaran za'amtum khawf al fitna. You, you straight away came up to us and told us that we fear fitna. We fear separation. Ala fil fitna tisakadu. Indeed, in fitna, indeed, in this trial, you have failed. It is, it is the yeah. sunnah of Allah to trial his creation. It is the very yeah. sunnah of the way. And it is the divine decree of, of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi Take it from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. That this ummah, this nation shall separate, shall have divisions, not only in, uh, you know, Sunni Islam, but also in Shia Islam, also with the Shias. The narration states yeah. that, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, Taftariqu uh, ummati, my nation shall be separated into 73 sects. All of them are in hell, but one. Who are they, O Messenger of Allah? The Messenger, blessings be upon him, replied, the, the, the saved nation or the, the nation upon the truth, insha'Allah, is... Uh, what Ali is upon and his companions is what yeah. Ali wa shi'atuhu Ali wa shi'atuhu now Ali alayhi salam says Imam Ali, our Imam whom we follow says that my ummah these th th 13 from the 73 13 sects from the 73 they say that they love us they say that they they claim that they are followers of Ali they claim to, to be lovers of Ali, supporters of Ali, followers of Ali. All of yeah. them are in hell but I... <coughs> Go ahead, sister. Yeah, uh, you know, I know that, that fit, you know, the separation and, you know, hatred is something uh, unavoidable. It's so, but... I, I wonder how can we avoid the violence come, uh, that comes from the extremists, the, the intolerant people? It is, it is actually um, uh, a tajruba. We have, exper we have experimented this matter. Nothing will happen, inshallah. This is all a, a paranoia. It's all paranoia. That they will come yeah. up and they will rise <laughs> and they will kill and they will... No, none of this will happen. None of this will happen, inshallah. Sure. This is actually a, a has have been said at 
dozens of times before. You know, when Sheikh Al-Habib emerged in Kuwait, beginning his rejectionist revolution, or not his re rejectionist re revolution, rather re reviving this rejectionist revolution, revolution, they told him that the, the killing in Kuwait will be up to the ankles. Blood will, will be spilled. What are you doing? Sheikh Al-Habib said that this is, this is paranoia that you live in. What are you saying? None of this will occur. Yeah. We are merrily expressing our beliefs. They have the right to express their beliefs. Normally, nothing, nothing is, is, is. We do we attack them or do we now the Allah kill them for saying Abu Talib is a kafir? We believe Abu Talib oh, alayhi salam is from the Awliya Allah. Awliya yeah. Allah tabaraka wa taala. They they say he's a kafir in fi dhahdahim min nar. In hellfire, they say yeah. he is. Do we go? Do we, do we see us? Do you see us going killing them? Going to their mos mosques and you know. Explode, exploding ourselves, bombing them, killing them. We don't see, you don't see us doing that. Because it's not of yes. the school of Ahlul Bayt to do such thing. This is from the school of Abu Bakr yes. They have the right to say that. However, we don't have the right to express our beliefs on certain companions whom we believe to be hypocrites. How is that just? How is that just? Yes, right, just. this is very unfair. Um, but you mentioned the the question the the issue of of the sheikh in kuwait and i heard many kuwait websites saying that they are very tolerant of people's religions but if this is true why they why did they they punish him so hardly for expressing his beliefs can you repeat the question and um, why did he receive such a harsh punishment on, in Kuwait, if, if Kuwait is such a tolerant country towards the other's religions. You know, in reality, Sheikh Al-Habib did not receive a harsh punishment. What's happened? Well, he was arrested and he... was, and arrested. He, and he was arrested as yeah, the companions of the he, Imams alayhim was salam, were, were arrested. Muhammad ibn Abi Umair spent 17 years or, eight, or 18 years in prison. It is, it is yeah. the, the natural cause that, that, that's our, that the old Shia were all upon. Sheikh Al-Habib was not tortured, bihamdulillah ta'ala. Sheikh Al-Habib did not, nothing really, nothing major happened. This is the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the, in the narration it states, in the narration, ladies and gentlemen, hear this. Hear this and take this as, as, as a foundation that you go upon. In the narration of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam says لَيَنْصُرَنَّ اللَّهُ مَنْ نَصَرَ فَاطِمَةً Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall give victory to the one who gives victory to Fatima alayhi salam. This is Fatima, her right was usurped and she was killed. And she went to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whilst angry upon this nation. The one who yeah. takes upon himself to give victory to her, to, for, for her, to, for her message to be conveyed to the masses. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall give victory to him. It is the promise of Allah. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O those who believe. In tansuru Allah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. O those who believe. If you shall give victory to Allah, if you give victory to Allah, Allah the Almighty shall give victory to you and plant your feet firmly. Keep you steadfast. Yeah. Don't worry about the enemies. Don't worry about the enemies, fear no one. Always put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as you're pleasing Allah. And you know that you are upon clarity, you're upon the way of the Masumin alayhi salam, the way of the infallibles. Yes. Fear no one, inshaAllah. Fear no one. And by the way, just to comment on your, on your question that, you know, they may increase in killing Shia, uh, etc. ISIS may emerge again. I heard this funny, funny statement. From one of them, they said, "You see, because of your film, ISIS would emerge again." No, ISIS would be separated, and the ide ideology of ISIS would be broken up in a way that is has never been seen before. Inshallah. There is no. This, this is this is this is the problem, dear sister, sister Gabriella, is that they yeah. are unable to see what is the problem. They rather attack and, mm -hmm. and or, or wage war on. Terrorist organizations, Al-Qaeda, 
uh, Al Shabab, Jabhat al Nusra, ISIS, but they don't go after the very roots. They may destroy ISIS, another ISIS will emerge. Another Al Qaeda will emerge. Yes. They may destroy them, absolutely finish them, as they finished ISIS, for example. There is no, no longer ISIS. However, the, the, the ideology remains. We go after the ideology to, to demolish the, uh, the organizations that will, be, that will later come or later emerge. That is the problem, is that they are, they, are, they, are sh they are very small and narrow in eyesight and overall view. If you want to demolish terrorism, if you want to finish terrorism, you show the world the roots of ISIS, the roots to where ISIS and individuals like ISIS or, you know, under the cover of this ideology, you show to them the foundations upon that that's, uh, were, were founded by the ideology who emerged, who yani, produced the ideology of ISIS. What am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that Abu Bakr and Umar were the founding fathers of the ideology of ISIS, burning individuals alive, killing people, killing mass pe people, takfir. This is the, the, very, the very ideology of Abu Bakr and Umar, as you will see in the film, inshallah. You will see all of this in the film. Their crimes shall be known for the world, and no longer after this film, insha'Allah, such individuals will be respected, thereby finishing terrorism from the, from the, from the face of the earth in, in the name of Islam. No longer Al-Islam, the religion of Al-Islam will be attributed to a terrorist religion after this film. It will finish terrorism, it will finish the likes of ISIS. The ideology yeah. will be dispersed and destroyed, insha'Allah. Yeah, brother, but... But there is also an issue because uh, many people criticize ISIS, and 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 it's actually actually very condemned worldwide. People know that many people know that is not based purely in Islam, but by radicals, by extremists. But sim but it's a, it's an organization very hard to destroy because it's based it's founded with strength with money, and and I think there will be needed many efforts to destroy it, like more than just criticism. I'm I'm sorry I I may have missed your question or your comment. Yeah, I I say that um, these these organizations they they are built built upon upon power money um, you know this is very difficult to destroy and many people criticize this type of organization is is Al Qaeda but it's needed much more to destroy it I believe. Of course, if we really want to destroy such organizations, we may destroy them with power. Just like, for yeah. example, USA, for example, and the, the uh, al hajj al-Shaabi in Iraq. The strong, honorable people of Iraq who made a rainforce or made a force to defend their country. We destroyed ISIS, yes. ISIS is destroyed. However, the ideology remains. If we want to absolutely eradicate the ideology of ISIS or eradicate terrorists in the name of Islam, we go after the ideology. Where do they get this ideology? Where do they get their, their uh, legitimacy to do such action? Look at the videos. They come up, the ISIS guy, he stands up like this. He stands up and he says, ladies and gentlemen, or wherever, whatever he says, we are killing this person. As Abu, we are burning this person as Abu Bakr ibn Abi Quhafa burns al fuja al sulami Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, a very known Hanbalite scholar, his name is Ibn Rajab. He has many books on fiqh and, and uh, etc. He says, upon the action of Abu Bakr and Khalid ibn al-Walid, burning in, as, as, as a punishment in Islam is burning alive in a punishment in Islam is, is uh, um, forgot his exact, his exact words, just to be precise, but he, legit, he legitimizes such action, yeah. burning alive by usurped government such as Abu Bakr. 
a usurped, terroristic, tyrannical, unhuman, inhumane government, an inhumane individual. A person who lacks morality, a person who is morally depraved. And I'm not trying to anger you in this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not trying to anger the, the Sunnis. Why would I want to yeah. do that? I, my, we, our main goal, our main target is to uplift this, this shadow that has been forecasted upon this Ummah. When they, when a, when a, how many Muslims, how many Muslim women have been attacked in the streets? How many Muslim women's, women have been attacked in the streets for merely wearing the hijab? How many men were killed? How many men, they were insulted, spat on? Sisters were spat on? Named with, ter with, with not nice names or disrespectful names. Why is this? Why is this? It is because people because hate the actions. Islam. Exactly, they hate Islam because of the actions that these terrorists do upon the foundation of Abu Bakr and Umar, found, upon the foundations that Abu Bakr and Umar founded and Aisha. This is the issue here. Yeah. This is the problem here. What we are doing here is trying to merrily uplift this shadow that has been forecasted upon this nation. Bring to <coughs> you a brand new beaming light. A brand new image yeah. of Al-Islam with the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his purified progeny. <laughs> Hold on to the purified progeny and you shall see. And you shall see the absolute difference. The absolute difference between the progeny of Muhammad and their guidance, between the dark, tyrannical, yeah. terroristic foundations of Abu Bakr and Umar. Just look at the difference. We bring to you, mm -hmm. and you decide, and you decide. And this 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 film shall portray these two. This film shall portray the two narratives. And there you can decide. You can see that which, which, which is upon the truth. Which is upon the truth. And which is upon the guidance of the Holy Prophet The Shias of Ali. Whom, hold, whom held on to him by the command of the Messenger. Or the Shias of Abu Bakr. The followers of Abu Bakr. Who followed him in deviation. Shia Ali alayhi salam. So. Yes, brother. This is this was very clarifying. It it was very nice to talk to you again. And forgive me if I took many of your time. <laughs> no, I I actually apologize if I've taken long. My apologies. No. May Allah bless you, <laughs> it's sister. It's okay, brother. And uh, may Allah bless. It's it's an honor to speak to you once again after you have announced your tashayya. After you've announced. I say the Islam. same. And I I am Allah glad that you, that you. Allah, uh, a prolonged life. And bless you abundantly, inshallah. Thank you very much for your call, I wish sister. the same. I, I am glad that you still remember me. <laughs> I, I, I do remember you. I was, I was the one who, who, uh, who was translating your testimony um, as you were oh. giving it to Sheikh Al-Habib in the live show a few months ago. Actually, almost a year ago, sorry. Almost a year ago. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Nahmadullah wa nashkurah. We thank Allah abundantly. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm and keep us steadfast and sincere in our motives and in our service to Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Thank you very much for your call, dear sister. We have another caller. Um, going back to uh, Brother Fahmi's question regarding the shadows. Do the Imams have shadows and did uh, the shadows appear in the film? The Imams والسلام, do not have shadows, as stated. And the shadows in the film, uh, if you can take the call, but uh, uh, put him on mute for, for a second, inshallah. Uh, as, as I just uh, finished this, this question, the shadows in the film uh, do appear. Firstly, it's because this film is, is brought forth to the Western audience, so they would not understand 
um, such a karama, such a attribute. This, this attribute will probably be um, understood or noticed, noticed by uh, the Muslims, by the Shia specifically. And if we were to actually put, try to portray uh, the infallibles in, in the most correct form, we would have to bring the infallibles themselves to take the roles. It is absolutely impossible to portray or depict the infallibles um, in, in, in the most authentic way. We tried our best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a witness. We tried our best, our best to depict the infallibles in the most uh, authentic way according to the narrations. However, it's shortcoming, we are not, uh, we don't deny that we have, uh, that we must have, there must have been shortcomings. But as, as, from, yani for, uh, as a preface, we have tried our best to work as, as precise as possible. And at the end of the day, this is from the imagination of the film, uh, sorry, imagination of the, of the boy named Laith. So this is his, his imagination of the, of the story. So it will be linked uh, to his imagination in the film, as you will see, inshallah. Let's take Brother Abbas. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Is it Abbas from USA, correct? Yes, that's correct. That's me. <coughs> Sorry. Welcome. Dear uh, congratulations on this project. It's uh, very amazing. And thank you for putting on shows like this that uh, give even more knowledge about the, the film and uh, the history behind it. I just yeah, had a few it. points, if you allow me to, to comment on. Um, touching on the, the depictions of the infallibles that you are talking about. I know a lot of Shias and Sunnis alike have some... Uh, some uh, qualms with the depictions of the Ahl al-Bayt, but I don't understand why there's such a double standard. For example, like uh, even in the Shia communities, when you go to places that are so holy like Karbala, you'll see depictions of the Ahl al-Bayt with their faces uncovered of Imam al-Hassan and Hussein, for example. So, you'll see those in the streets and no one bats an eye. But when you see someone in like a photo like or in the video that you said that was... Uh, a mix of cinematography and the visual effects and things like that and they so seem to be up in arms over nothing and then even for the sunni side they have historical depictions of the ahlul bayt for example the ottoman paintings have revealed the faces of the prophet without light on them and things like that so i just wanted to point out that there's a double standard in that regard and it's quite interesting to see Hassan mm -hmm. um another thing that i wanted to point out is uh, for the Shias who are up in arms about this uh, movie, why are they so loud in regards to this um, when our narrative has been available to the opponents for hundreds and hundreds of years? Like, in this era, our books and our history and our narrative is flooded online. No one is ignorant of the Shia opinion of, for example, Sunni idols like Abu Bakr and Omar. It's Pretty much every Sunni you ask, they will know that Shias have a negative opinion of these um, people. So I wonder why they're so shocked when this is going to come to the big screen. It's not like it's something new. It's been widespread. We shouldn't underestimate the intellect of our opponents in this regard. It's, it's interesting, don't you think? Of course, of course. It is, uh, they, what they don't understand is that um, they are uh, portraying us they are representing the shayyot in such a weak way. Mm -hmm. This is our beliefs. This is what we believe. We believe that the, that the haqq of Ali, that's the right of Ali, the rightful successor of the Messenger of Allah was usurped by these figures, Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman. These individuals <laughs> are uh, individuals who usurp the right of Amir al -Walim. We do not respect these individuals in the end of the day. And we cannot, this, we, we cannot deny that we uh, absolutely view them as, as hypocrites, as power-hungry individuals. And that is our right to express our beliefs. As you express that the father of, of the Prophet and his mother and his uncle were kuffar. You say that they are kuffar. We don't, we, in, in our belief, this is kuffar in itself. 
It angers in me. The way we see, in, the, in our beliefs, we see that the one who says such th such thing and believes such things is, is, is and this word, this word, saying it is is kufr. Mm -hmm. Saying it is kufr, not necessarily that he becomes a kafir. Not necessarily that he's, he becomes a kafir. No, but such <laughs> saying such thing is is kufr. Do we kill it's you for this? Kufr, yes. No, we don't kill you for this. You're allowed to express it. You may express it. However, why do you come up with us? against us to say when we express our beliefs regarding Abu Bakr and Umar. And what's so yani, frustrating, well not frustrating, yani, so yani, laughable is that the Shias here, the Shias here in, in, in our time with regards to the film, they are the most, the so-called Shias of course, they, they, they are the most people <laughs> coming out against this film and speaking about this with film with all power and passion. It's However, the very Sunnis yes. whom the film is targeted or, or represents them, or represents their narrative, their, their, their narrative, they are almost silenced, they literally cannot be heard. Who is speaking? <laughs> Who is speaking? Tell me. Who is speaking it's from the, from the, even, even from the English, from the English, people in the English world? Who is speaking about, about the film? Who has said, no, we deny this film, it has portrayed Abu Bakr and Umar and, and it is, it is, etc. We don't, we, they almost cannot be heard. I've, I heard of one, one individual or two speaking about it. Actually, only two, as far as, as far as I know. Only two spoke in a very shy way. <laughs> in a very shy <laughs> way, very trying, mi mildly. You know, as I don't know what's their motives here. How are they trying to deal with this? In a very shy way. However, you see the Batriya. Those who have mixed truth with falsehood, those who truly mm -hmm. have problems in their creed, they come up with such passion and such power, speaking to everyone, speaking, to, spreading it everywhere that this film is corrupted, this film is so on. The, the very ambassador of, of the Iranian regime, you know what's, what's astonishing, their brother Abbas? Yes. That we did not see the Saudi ambassador speaking against the film. We did not see the the, the ambassador of the uh, you know uh, of the United uh, Arab Emirates speaking against the film. We did not see the ambassador of Qatar. We did not see the ambassador of Kuwait of Bahrain. We did not see the, those amb ambassadors even mentioning the film as of now. Right. That's Who a good point. Who did we hear? Who did we hear? Who did we hear attack the film in such a way? The ambassador of a country that represents the Sharia. They are silenced. You speak. Don't you have shame? And you know what this ambassador done? This ambassador, what done? the ambassador in, 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 in uh, the United Kingdom, the ambassador of the, of the Iranian regime in the, mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom, sent a right. message, sent a message, sent, sent a letter to each and every mosque in the UK, to each and every organization, to each and every party, saying what? Hear it? Listen to me. Let's yeah, I unite. Can hear you. Let's unite on uh, attacking this film and stopping it from emerging. Stop from what? How can they backstab to show you like that? What? What? How? How can you call yourself a Shia after this? How can you call yourself a Shia? Do you not fear that one once upon a on a day you will uh, be held accountable for your actions you are standing against Fatima really? and you call yourself a Shia? let it be let it be the Sunnis themselves so called Sunnis are silent no but the Shias come up so called Shias of course they mm -hmm. send, he sends a message to each and every organization to each and every party, each and every mosque in the United Kingdom, telling them, let's support, let's unite, let's unite upon attacking this film, upon stopping it from emerging. Let's apply pressure on the government to suppress the voice of Fatima, to suffocate her once again, to not let her story emerge once again. No, let's <laughs> unite and, and keep it silent. Let's keep it silent. What, what can we say to these such individuals? Definitely hurts the heart. Of course. You know, Brother Ali, I have another another point that I just wanted to make. Um, if you think about it, just imagine, for example, 
if the Christians were to have in their history Lady Mary be tortured and martyred in this despicable way, if you just imagine what they would do to spread the word of that injustice, they would not stop talking consistently. They'd be making media like this. They'd be telling the entire world of um, the oppression that this beautiful lady suffered at the hands of her opponents. Of course, you can expect that. But as soon as it comes to Lady Fatima, who some of us believe is even superior to Lady Mary, is that she's the Lady of Heaven, of course, then there's complete silence. And it's taken so long for someone to actually have the goal to produce something like this, where her message is not being um, thrown under the rug, you know what I mean? Of course, so Sense. it's it's just saddening that we have this double standard. Like, if if anyone had respect for this lady, then they would be consistently talking about it. And it's not like it doesn't happen. Like, we have Fatimiyah every year in our masjids and stuff like that, and it, and it's streamed on the internet, and we talk about these things. But as soon as um, the Rafa the Foundation make a film about it, suddenly it's it's a bad thing. Yeah. My son, so. Yeah, and then you know, the I just wanted day, to leave off my. In the end of the sorry. day, this film, as as they can, they can unite the the powers of the film. They can unite the powers of 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 the world, the biggest powers of the world. Unite! No, no, please unite. Mm -hmm. You may unite and you may bring your forces, bring put your money and bring your lawyers and bring, uh, you know, your nuclear bombs, inshallah, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do, you may unite. You may unite all of humanity, all of humanity, to try to fight this film and try to suppress the voice of Fatima. Fatima alayhi salam. In the end of the day, will be victorious and her Shia. Mark my words. Mark my words. History will not have mercy upon those who refer to themselves as Shia and fight this film. History. We, we will die one day. We will die one day, and inshallah, generations will come. Although we hope to see our Imams alayhi salam. Our, the Imam of the revolution of our Imam alayhi salam in our time. However, however, if that is not in our time, the, gen the next generations, the next generations will come, and the world will be different after this film. The world will be different. What, what, one hundred and eighty turn, it will change. History will not have mercy upon those who betrayed Fatima and and worked so hard to usurp her right. To usurp her right and suppress, suppress her voice from being conveyed to the people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I just wanted to end my call uh, with one last point. I know this uh, entire show has been talking about some of the negatives of the film and and on the call tr controversy regarding it. But I just wanted to point out that um, some of us are overlooking some other scenes. Like we keep talking about the attack on the House of Fatima, but something so beautiful about this film and the film trailer is the depiction of some other powerful scenes. Like for example, Ghadir or the battles of uh, Khaybar and the scene of Al Kisa and stuff like that. I think we should emphasize more about the beauty of this like Islamic narrative and the positive scenes that are there that are so beautifully depicted. I just find it amazing. And the, the trailer reactions that I've seen from non-Muslims have had so much love for the beauty of the depiction of this film. And I think it should be highlighted more. Ahsanto. Jazakumullah khair al jaza. Well said, dear brother. This film right. is not only about the attack on Lady Fatima. It's rather about the life of Lady Fatima. Her life. Right. It is about her life, her beginning to her end. Many, many things that you will, you will see through this film. Many, many events I wish I could speak to. I just wish. But I, I, I just, uh, inshallah, await this film. Await, await, await this film. And once you see it, inshallah, uh, you would realize uh, that this is truly a new era, a new age that we have embarked upon. May Allah bless you, Brother Abbas, and thank you very much for your call. Thank you, Brother Ali. Jazakumullah khair al jaza. We have now, uh, it seems that we have uh, surpassed the time of the show. Uh, I would, I would uh, ask Brother Hisham, uh, shall we continue to, to, re to read the article? Um, we may continue to read the article quickly and then go to the YouTube chats 
uh, and I can see, mashallah, there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, interactions in the YouTube chat, mashallah. Maybe we can take a few questions from there to to end at uh, an hour forty. Uh, sorry, an hour thirty for the show. Uh, yeah, we can stop the calls for now, unless if there's a unless if there's a reaction, um, unless if there's a call uh, who wants to react to the trader, who wants to voice out his message, voice out his uh, inputs on watching the trader, uh, we can take it, inshallah. Um, so just to cover the f where, where we stopped from, as it is Im uh, important to cover it as we are now. So this is the picture that they have put. This is where we ended last. And we continue with, with reading the article. Uh, is Brother Hisham with us? Yeah, if you can put the screen on the, uh, on the live show. Ah, center. So this is where we are right now. We read, the movie depicts two plot, plot lines simultaneously or simultaneous, simultaneously. The plights of an Iraqi child who loses his mother during the war and the heart-wrenching journey of Lady Fatima. We have another call. Let's take it, inshallah. Mahdi from Hello, London. Can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum. Hello, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum, there is a little bit of delay between the live and the, and the phone call, so I'm going to drop my, my headset. Uh, yeah, so first of all, congratulations for the release of this movie. It's uh, great news that I suppose everybody is uh, expecting, like either if you like it or if you don't like it, if you're with really or against, it <laughs> doesn't really matter. It's going to be an event in itself. So congratulations to all the, all the team. Uh, I think I want to call on the behalf of some people on the chat because they got like some clarification and um, I would like to say some word and maybe I'm going to ask your, your opinion after that. Is that okay? Yeah, inshallah. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I want to be the ambassador because there is a lake of cultural debate in this community. People are afraid to ask questions and they, they tend to put the dust under the carpet, hoping that it's going to disappear. No, let's let's talk about things openly, right? Um, there are two main topics that brings a lot of controversy. The first one is like, should we depict and represent uh, the symbol or the idols of the so-called Ahl al-Sunnah? But we call them al-Mukhalifin. Should we do that or not? Is that a good thing or not? Like, that's the first uh, question that brings a lot of uh, interrogation around it. The should second we, one is like... Should we depict the figures of, of, the, of the opponent sect? This is the question? Uh, yeah, that's the first one. Okay. And if it's okay, I, I'm going to give my opinion and then I'm going to let you like go may maybe deeper if it's, if it's all right. Of course. And the second question I've seen on the, on the chat is like, should we insult publicly the, the, these idols? Like Abu Bakr, Omar, if we want to put a name on them. So uh, my opinion, and that, that's only me, I suppose, like if you want to uh, ask the question about like, do you, should we depict and represent like these people? Think about a character, an historical character like Hitler, for example. Is there any problem nowadays to insult Hitler or like to depict him in an angle that shows his real face, a murderer, criminal, a racist person, etc.? Absolutely not. But that became something normal in the culture. But it wasn't the case a couple of years ago when nationalism was at the top, of, at the peak of its strength. So people would be afraid of denouncing the, the crimes of Hitler. And we are pretty much in the same situation nowadays. People are scared. What are you scared about? Let's bring, let's shed light on like things that happen. So people understand what's the problem that we have with these people so they can differentiate clearly between light and darkness. Because if we stop mixing light and darkness, if we are polite with Abu Bakr, Omar, Aisha, people are going to get confused. That's my first point. The second point, the second point is like, should we insult publicly uh, this type of idols? Again, if, like my answer is going to be shorter this time. If someone like uh, hit your mom or any member of your family in the street, would you have any issues like by insulting them? It would be normal. It would be a normal reaction to have, right? What about someone hitting the the daughter of the prophet? Who, who like your heart is? I don't really understand those people who are kind of, you know, from a cold, very cold uh, nature. We don't really understand like what uh, emotions are, and obviously, like we also have an intellect. I'm not saying that we should be purely emotional, but in the same time, look at what the prophet uh, Muhammad and Ibrahim did. They insult the idols days and night, days and night. There is no dawah, there is no 
a path to God that doesn't encompass this type of action. It's impossible. Otherwise, everybody would stay home, have a look on TV, Netflix, spend time on, on Netflix, have some, I don't know, biscuits and, and, and pray for the best. And I don't think I don't think that's the right way to do it. So, guys, that you are in the chat. Please, if you have any question, come and join the show. Like, feel free to express yourself, even if you disagree. We would like to to hear you. But, brother, I'm just gonna ask you what you think about that. What's your What's your opinion? And that's it for me. Ahsantum, jazakum Allah khair al jaza. Thank you very much for your call, brother Mahdi. The first question: Should we depict the figures of the opponent sect? The answer would be the very um, message that we're trying to convey in this film is to show to the world the very roots of terrorism, explaining to them the question that was often posed by millions around the globe. How and where is this terrorist, terroristic, uh, terroristic ideology emerging from? The Muslims are saying no, it is not from our Prophet. However, we see that Muslims or people in the name of Islam causing all of this ravic or ravage in, in earth Killing and uh, how do they link these two things? The message of the film that we are trying to convey is to depict the founding fathers of terrorism. And Brother Mahdi said it beautifully when he made the comparison with Hitler. We have to, ladies and gentlemen, depict these individuals in the correct way that they are. And even in the article, they wrote that this film is remarkably historically accurate. Remarkably historically ac accurate. Even the individuals, Abu Bakr, Omar, Aisha, were depicted according to the historical records precisely. Precisely, very precisely. And we may even produce a research in this. When the film comes out, inshallah, people, I'm sure, people will come out from everywhere saying, how did you come up present Aisha in this way? How did you depict Abu Bakr in this way? What is your evidence? And over here, this is where we come, inshallah. <laughs> this is where we, um, inshallah, respond to these, to these arguments or these questions posed with researched material, with, with, a, with an academic research. Each and every characteristic the blue eyes, as you will see. Each and every characteristic there is. The beard, even the beard of Abu Bakr was, was, was portrayed or depicted according to the narrations. His actions, the way he is, the way he behaved, the very personality of Abu Bakr and Umar and Aisha were depicted according to historical records, historical narrations, that's no one can deny. This is a this is a well established base. So, in what we are doing here is conveying this message, and in order to convey such message, we must depict these individuals. Otherwise, how can we convey the message in its correct way, in its in its cinematic way? So, uh, inshallah, this has uh, answered the first uh, question. Regarding the second question, um, should we insult publicly? And Brother Mahdi said it, mashallah. Should we insult publicly? Ladies and gentlemen, the asal, as in the very 
foundation is that Muslims should express their beliefs publicly and whenever they see a person who is uh, of deviation, for example, of innovation, the asal is to confront him. Disguising belief, concealing belief, taqiyya, dissimulation is a secondary hukum, is a secondary ruling. The first ruling is what? The first ruling is jahr. Fasda'a bil qawl. As in, in, as in the Quran. Speak out. Speak unto the messenger. Fasda' bil qawl. This is the asal, ladies and gentlemen. We read also in Surah Mumtahana. It is the example of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the example that has been set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. قَدْ كَانَتْ لَكُمْ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ فِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ إِذْ قَالُوا لِقَوْمِهِمْ إِنَّا بُرَآءُ مِنْكُمْ وَمِمَّا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ كَفَرْنَا بِكُمْ وَبَدَا بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةُ وَالْبَغْضَاءُ أَبَدًا حَتَّى تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَحْدَهِ Indeed, you have had the example set in Ibrahim, in the Prophet Abraham, and those who followed him, when they said unto their people, Verily, we have disassociated from you, and of all that you worship instead of God, we disbelieve in you or we deny you kafarna bikum we deny kafarna bikum wa bada baynana wa baynakum and and it has emerged and between us and you have arisen enmity and hatred until you believe in Allah the one and only. The asal, ladies and gentlemen, for the people of corruption, for the people of deviation, for the people of innovation, if it is necessary to insult publicly, we insult publicly. And the meaning of insult here, don't uh, understand it as in, uh, you know, because it's often, these, these, these concepts are often not clear in the English world, in the Western world, because they, they uh, don't really comprehend these matters properly and it should be presented in, a, in an academic fashion where these mafahim, these understandings are portrayed or brought forth in a way where people may understand or can't comprehend fully. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said إِذَا رَأَيْتُمْ أَهْلَ الرَّيْبِ وَالْبِدْعِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ If you see the people of doubt and innovation after me فَأَظْهِرُ الْبَرَاءَةَ مِنْهُمْ Reveal your disassociation from them. Disassociation. بَرَاءَةَ مِنْهُمْ وَأَكْثِرُوا مِنْ سَبِّهِمْ And excessively, excessively insult them. وَالْوَقِيعَةَ وَبَاهِتُوهُمْ And debate them. وَبَاهِتُوهُمْ حَتَّى يَحْذَرَهُمُ النَّاسِ so that people may, re may refrain from going to them. May refrain from going to them. Ladies and gentlemen, Abu Bakr and Umar, the people that you are very, you know, trying to stop us, trying to conceal our expression towards them, are the very individuals who the Imams, read the seerah of the Imams, read the biography of the Imam, read what they said about Abu Bakr and Umar. Fatima to Zahra, Sarawatullahi Aleha said, Fight the leaders of disbelief. They are the leaders of disbelief. That's number one. Fight the leaders of, of, of disbelief. Fatima to Zahra, Sarawatullahi Aleha used to 
used to, used to invoke the damnations of Allah upon Abu Bakr and Umar in her prayer. And this is in their books. Read Al Imam Al Siyasa by Ibn Qusayba. You will find this report. Before her, the Messenger of Allah, often we, uh, we get asked this question How did Abu, how did Abu Bakr and Umar, how do, we, how, how do you want us to accept Abu Bakr and Umar as deviants and as hypocrites when the Messenger of Allah did not warn from them or did not speak out against them? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi called Abu Bakr a Dajjal. Did you hear this before? No, you did not, probably. Other from Shaykh al Habib. Alhamdulillah, actually, no. Shaykh al Habib has a, research, has, has a lecture of this. Go to Rafidah's uh, 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 YouTube channel and you will find a research presented by Shaykh al Habib from Sunni books, so called. From so called Sunni books saying that Abu Bakr is a Dajjal, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi called Abu Bakr a Dajjal. Imam Ali alayhi salam used to walk when, when, the, when, when the first attack happened. When the first attack happened. Not, not, not um, the first violent attack, because there were three attacks in reality. There were three attacks on the house of Fatima alayhi salam. The first was not violent. This, this, the, the last two were violent. The first attack their aim, their target, was to remove Banu Hashim from the uh, house of Amir al muminin because they had congregated there. Abu Bakr, may Allah's curse be upon him, when he had usurped power and, and went to the mosque of, or the, or the pulp, pulpit of the Messenger of Allah after his death, there were four parties. There were the Muhajireen, with Abu Bakr, they were, or a group of the Muhajirin, a very selected group, which was which represented a few individuals in in Saqifa, Abu Bakr, Umar, Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah, and also stated uh, Abdul Rahman bin Auf. And then there is the Ansar, who elected Saad bin Ubada, an Ansari. Then there is the people of Zuhra, Banu Zuhra, who went to uh, Abdul Rahman bin Auf and the father of, of, of Amr ibn al-As sorry, the father of Umar ibn Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas they went to Banu Zuhra the tribe of, of Zuhra delegated or they wanted to elect as a leader Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas and Abdul Rahman bin Auf they, they were disputing amongst each other as to which they elect as their leader and Banu Hashim went to Imam Ali alayhi salam. And not only Banu Hashim, a group of the Muhajirin and the Ansar. As it is narrated in, in Saqifa, in Al Tabari, go to Al Tabari, you will see that 12 men from the Ansar screamed in Saqifa, as inshallah you will see, said, لا نبايع إلا عليا. Only to Ali. Only to Ali. We pay allegiance. This is, this, is, this is what differentiates us, the Shia. That the rights of Imam Ali, those who congregated to Imam Ali, were from various people, from various tribes. Various tribes. Buraydatul Aslami, from the righteous companions, from Banu Aslam, took a flag, took the flag of Banu Aslam, because he was the leader of his tribe, with his tribe behind him, put or affirmed the flag on the ground and on and behind him was the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam saying I only pay allegiance to Sahibu Hadha al-Bayt I only give allegiance to the owner of this house the people of Banu Aslam, the people of Banu Umayyah do you have you ever heard, heard, heard this before other from Shaykh al-Habib Khalid ibn Sa'id ibn al-As a, a companion of the Messenger of Allah, he was he was he he was uh, the seventh, the seventh man to accept Islam. Khalid ibn Sa'id ibn Al As, research his personality and know him. When when Abu Bakr usurped power, he used to say remarkable words. How we wish the swords return to our hands once again. 
from Banu Umayyah and his two brothers, Amr and, 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 other, and his other brother. From Banu Umayyah, from the Muhajirin and the Ansar. Hulayfa ibn al-Yaman, for example, Al-Miqdad ibn al-Aswad, they are not from Banu Hashim. They are not from Banu Hashim. They all dedicated to the house of Amir, of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam. And uh, stayed with them. Inshallah, we will, we will finish in five minutes, inshallah. And, and uh, congregated to the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam. So this was the second attack. The second attack was to, to remove this crowd. The first attack was to remove Banu Hashim, which they did. The second attack was to remove the crowd, the, the crowd, the, the, the army, literally the army that was raised in that house. Almost 300 individuals, 360 individuals were at the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And the third attack was the attack on Lady Fatima alayhi salam, which no one remained after. No one was there in the third attack. In the first attack, when Imam Ali, uh, when, when they had removed uh, Banu Hashim, from the house of Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Ali came out to the mosque of Kufa, sorry, to the mosque of Medina, saying that you have congregated upon the ajl, upon the kalf, calling Abu Bakr a kalf, the kalf of the ummah. Imam al Hassan alayhi salam has words also regarding Uthman and Abu Bakr and Umar and Mughira. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam on the day of Ashura said, I shall complain to the Messenger of Allah and tell him that Abu Bakr and Umar have killed me. Imam Zayn al Abidin alayhi salam says, Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr and Umar are, are disbelievers. Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says that they have carried Abu Bakr and Umar that we teach our young and our old to disassociate from them. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, Imam al-Kadhim, Imam al-Ridha, Imam al-Jawad at, at age four used to say he was asked once, upon, once when, he, when, when, he, when his, his father asked him, Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam, his father asked him, what are you thinking about? The Imam alayhi salam was thinking for a while. Al-Ridha alayhi salam asks his son at age four, what are you thinking about? Imam al-Jawad alayhi salam responds, I am thinking about what happened to my mother Fatima. And after all of this, after all of their crimes, after all of what they have committed, you tell us to not insult them publicly or not to uh, let people aware or make people aware of their crimes. When it is the duty, as the Messenger of Allah said in, a, in an authentic narration, nas, insult them. Debate them, disassociate from them, appear, reveal your disassociation from them so that people may fear them. And after all of this, after all of this, you still don't want us to express our beliefs publicly? It's because, we did, it's because some of us in the, in the first phase of Islam did not express their beliefs publicly, did not speak out, which caused this deviation. They were not like Abu Dhar. They were not like Al-Miqdad, who used to speak out and used to, used to scream in the face of Abu Bakr. They did not do that. And later, the later on Shia, the, the, the Shias who came later on, or are like, were like th those that you see, begging for unity, a unity that will never be achieved. You will never go against the divine decree of Allah. Bring all of your people. You can never ask yourself this question, and, and after this we finish, inshallah. Ask yourself this question. You have tried to unite with them so much for over a millennia. 
you have attempted many, many attempts to unite with the opponents. They always look, they always degrade you. And a unity was not achieved. Why don't you revise yourself? Think. Is that this action that we are doing, is this what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَعَتَصِمُوا جَمِيعًا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Unite all in the rope of Allah. There's one rope of Allah. They're not, there's no حِبَالُ Allah. There is no ropes of Allah. There is one rope. This rope is the Qur'an and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam Ali alayhi salam Once we unite to this rope, we will achieve unity. And this is what we call for. We, ladies and gentlemen, call for unity. Let us unite upon truth. And if we do not, if, and if we are, we are not able to uni unite upon Imam Ali alayhi salam and Ahlul Bayt, then we can agree to disagree. We can coexist. You still come to us, you come to our mosque, you eat from our food, we drop you home, as we always do. We always do. And with this, inshallah, we finish this live show, and I apologize if I have taken uh, uh, a long time. May Allah bless you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, and inshallah, we return to you next week with another show on the Ali Al-Habib, covering the latest of the film's uh, updates and also inshallah may be presenting a research regarding the issue of fitna the issue that there is fitna and what is the right understanding of fitna what is the right uh, understanding of unity inshallah next week we shall produce a research in this matter rectifying this understanding with the will of Allah. Hada wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ahli baytihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. Alhamdulillah.